No matter what else is happening in the world. There is always good news today. Welcome to Good News Today, the program you will always find good news, no matter what else is happening in the world. I'm Mark Teske, your host for Good News Today. I want to thank you for joining us. We got a great program. Here's what's coming up. We're going to begin with our devotional time, and that consists of our scripture reading, beautiful singing, and a brief study of that scripture. Today we'll be looking at Acts chapter 2, verses 22 through 24, an excerpt from the very first gospel sermon. So get out your Bibles, turn to Acts 2. I'll meet you there in just a moment. Following our devotional time, Austin Fowler helps us to have 2020 vision as we see the gospel more clearly. Jim Dearman will join us with some sound words about your finances or your future. Roger Campbell is ready, as always, to answer a question he was given. Today, he's answering the question, how does a person get into Christ? In our final segment, we have a Bible question for Anthony Dismuke and Troy Spradlin. Is it wrong for a Christian to participate in Halloween activities? Well, I hope you have your Bibles opened up to Acts 2, where we read beginning at verse 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. Him, being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands and have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Here in Acts chapter 2, it's been 50 days since the Passover when Jesus was killed. This was a feast of Pentecost when all the Jews would come to Jerusalem. And the disciples were together in an upper room, and the Holy Spirit came upon them miraculously, and they were speaking in languages that they hadn't studied before. So when we get to verse number 8, the visitors were hearing their native languages spoken by the twelve. And Peter's particular lesson, what he was speaking, is recorded for us here in Luke's account. He first addresses the nature of the miracle that these people have just noticed, these men speaking in languages they hadn't studied. Uh, some mockers thought that they were drunk. But Peter says, no, this is what Joel was talking about in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32, and he quotes it for them. Then Peter gets into the meat of his own lesson. 
And he's talking about Jesus of Nazareth. And he says he's been attested by God. God confirmed his identity through miracles, signs, and wonders. You know, Nicodemus said in John 3, verse 2, told Jesus, we know that you're a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. That's the same point Peter's making here. And the people that were hearing this lesson were witnesses to the miracles that Jesus had done. You see, the whole purpose of miracles was to establish the authority of the person who was speaking, confirming that that person was indeed genuine. And this genuine person from God was delivered by the determined purpose, according to the plan that had been laid out for him. The eternal purpose, we read in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 11, or the plan which he accomplished. So this was always the plan, and he did exactly what he set out to do. And this was indeed foreordained before the foundation of the world, 1 Peter 1.20. This was what uh, God was talking about in Genesis 3, verse 15. This was Satan bruising Jesus' heel while Satan was being stomped on the head. You see, Jesus never came and planned to set up an earthly kingdom. No, he was headed to the cross. Even before creation, he knew that's where things were going to end up. He created anyways. He came anyways. Jesus said when he was talking with Pilate in John chapter 18, verse 36, my kingdom is not of this world. You see, this was the plan for Jesus to be that sacrifice. This was also the foreknowledge of God. The Father and the Son both knew that Jesus' coming was going to lead to the cross. Yet Jesus created the world anyways, knowing where it was leading. Colossians 1.16, John 1 verse 3. So they took by lawless hands. You see, Jesus was murdered by the hands of the Romans. Pilate, who was the governor at the time, who was in charge, he declared Jesus innocent three times. Yet he still condemned him to death. But why did he do that? Well, in the, in the lesson here in Acts chapter 2, Peter's saying, now the guilt for that comes from you all. You see, Pilate tried to let Jesus go, John 19, verse 12. But the crowd there was screaming, crucify him, crucify him. And surely some of those people were right there listening to the sermon. So Jesus was crucified, but God raised him up, preaching the resurrection of Jesus. And then he quotes from Psalm 16, a psalm written by David, that the Holy One wouldn't be left in Hades, wouldn't be left in the grave. He says, now, David wasn't talking about himself. The grave is still here, but he was referring to Jesus. Thus, the resurrection was according to God's plan. Verse 31, further proof that Jesus was exactly who he said he was, the Christ, the Son of God. And as we see, this is the basic gospel message, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And through that death, burial, and resurrection, we can be saved. His sacrifice allowed that to us. And when we obey his plan of salvation, we're in essence reenacting that death, burial, and resurrection. Notice in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, that we die to our old selves, we're buried with him in baptism, and we rise up to walk in newness of life. That's a recreation of the gospel. And that's what happens when we obey him. Now, Austin Fowler is going to make sure that we're using 2020 vision to see the gospel. What is the gospel? We want to make sure that we see the gospel clearly and look at it from a biblical standpoint as we make sure that we do it with 2020 vision. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, Paul gives us a biblical definition of the gospel. He says, Moreover, brethren, I declare it unto you the gospel, 
Notice this, which I preached unto you, which you received, in which you stand, by which you are saved, we're saved by the gospel, if you hold fast the word which I preach unto you, unless you believe in vain. Now look at verse 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you first, which I also received, that Christ died for your sins, that he was buried, verse 4, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So what is the gospel? The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. But if we read 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 7 through 9, we see that there are two groups of people that God will take vengeance upon. Number one, the first group are those that do not know God, those that do not believe in God. But secondly, those that do not obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the question now becomes, how do I obey that? How do I obey the gospel if the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ? Well, Romans chapter 6 gives us the answer for that. In Romans 6, verses 1 through 4, the Bible says this. Paul says, where, where shall we say then? Shall we continue in gra- sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How should we who die to sin live in it any longer? Now look at verse 3. Or do you not know that as many of us that were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Remember, the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have to obey the gospel, 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 9. Well, how do I obey that? Romans 6, 3 and 4. We die to sin. We, we say, I'm not going to live my way anymore. I'm going to turn away from that lifestyle. I'm going to put that old man on the cross, and I'm going to start living for Jesus. And then if you look down at verse number four, we are buried with him in baptism. That is where we come in contact with the blood of Jesus. That's where we get the benefits of God of Christ's death on the cross. Our sins are washed away at this point, Acts 22 and verse 16. And then if we read in verse four and continuing, we are raised up with him by the glory of the Father. Even we should also walk in newness of life. And that's how I obey the gospel, by dying to sin, being buried in that water grave of baptism to raise up to walk in newness of life. Let's make sure that we see God clearly in 2020 vision by obeying the gospel the biblical way. What a great summary. The good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus that leads us to obedience through faith, repentance, and baptism. Thanks, Austin. Maybe you would like to learn more about what the Bible teaches about the gospel. We offer a free Bible course to help you do that very thing. We're going to give you our contact information. Then we'll be joined by Jim Dearman. You may have questions or comments about Good News Today. We'd like to hear from you. Or if you would like to receive free Bible study materials, please contact us. Our mailing address is Good News Today, P.O. Box 206, Dunlap, Tennessee, 37327. Again, that's Good News Today, P.O. Box 206, Dunlap, Tennessee, 37327. You may prefer to email us at goodnewstodaytv at gmail.com. That's goodnewstodaytv at gmail.com. Or call us toll-free at 1-877-384-7221. That's 1-877-384-7221. We'd like to hear from you. Hearing from our audience is always good news to us. The easiest way to enroll in our Bible course is on our website at gnttv.org. Just click where it says Bible course, fill out the information, and we'll mail it to you. We're pleased to partner with Truth.fm to bring you a 24-7 stream of Good News Today on their website. In addition to the Good News Today channel, they also have several others that all contain excellent Bible lessons. Now here's Jim Dearman with some sound words for us about your finances or your future. We will live eternally if we obey sound words. Abraham Lincoln once said, Financial success is purely metallic. The man who gains it has four metallic attributes. Gold in his palm, silver on his tongue, brass in his face, and iron on his heart. 
You know, there are many in our society to whom this statement would apply. Those who have as their goal in life solely the acquisition of material wealth have lost their love for God and men. Christ said, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, Luke 12, 34. Those who fall into this trap will lose their greatest possession. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Matthew 16, 26. The soul of each person exceeds the wealth of the entire world. Which is more important to you, your finances or your future? We will live eternally if we obey sound words. It is sobering when we think about it. 1 Timothy 6, verse 7, For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. Thanks, Jim. Our apps are an excellent place to get a dose of good news today or any day. We have material that you'll see on our program as well as some excellent material from years gone by. They're available for your phone, television, or tablet. Just look for Good News Today in the App Store. Now we're ready, as always, for a visit with Roger Campbell. Today he's answering the question, how does a person get into Christ? Be ready always. How does a person get into Christ? In the New Testament, we often read about blessings that are in Christ. But how does a lost person get into him? That's a really important question. How would you answer that? Or to be ready as a Christian to be able to give a defense or an answer? 1 Peter 3 and verse number 15. Well, think first of all about the wonderful blessings God makes available in His Son. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 and verse number 3 that in the Christ we have all spiritual blessings. A little further down in Ephesians 1 and verse 7, redemption is in the Christ. Romans 8 and verse 1, in Him there's no condemnation. 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 1, grace is in the Christ. And then 1 John 5 and verse 11, eternal life is in God's Son. So those amazing blessings They all come from God, and they're all available in only one place. That's in Christ. So if a lost person knows that it's only in Jesus that these blessings are available, then one who wants to be saved wants to know the answer to the question, how do I obtain those? What's required of me to get into the Christ? What about believing in Jesus? Is that necessary? In order to be saved, Jesus said, He that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, John 3 and verse 18. In the context, he was talking about believing in him as the Son of God. And so there's no doubt that in order to be saved or get into the Christ, one has to believe in Jesus. But listen carefully. The Bible never says that one believes into Jesus. We believe unto in the direction of salvation, but we don't believe into Jesus. What about repentance? Well, that's required. The Bible says in Acts 3 and verse 19, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So repentance takes us in the right direction but it doesn't get us into the Christ. Same thing with confessing faith in Jesus. With the mouth confession is made unto in the direction of salvation, Romans 10 and verse 10. And so while believing and repenting and confessing faith are taking us in the right direction and they're certainly required, none of those individually or collectively get us into the Christ. There are two New Testament verses in which we learn how to get into Jesus. One of those is asking the form of a question, Romans 6 and verse 3. Know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death? How'd they get into Christ? Baptized. 
The other verse is Galatians 3 and verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now that's God's answer. That's the Bible answer. That's the answer we want, and that's the only answer that we're going to give. The way to get into the Christ is by being baptized into water baptism for the remission of sin. I'm Roger King, and this has been Be Ready Always. Thanks, Roger. If you haven't done what Romans 6.3 and Galatians 3.27 teach, you're not in Christ yet, and you don't have all those blessings that Roger mentioned. You can start every day with your daily dose of good news by subscribing to our podcast, Good News Today, Daily Devotional Time. In just a moment, we'll give our Bible question to Anthony Dismuke and Troy Spradlin. Now we have a Bible question for Anthony and Troy. Is it wrong for a Christian to participate in Halloween activities? The question we have before us today is, is it wrong for a Christian to participate in Halloween activities? <laughs> now that's a hot button issue because yes. there are some people who have a very strong opinion about Halloween and then there's some people who don't really mind it at all. Right, and, and and we understand that people do feel feel very strongly about this, and what we want to do is answer this in the best, uh, most best way we know how, and, and biblically, that's biblically, yeah. right. And so that's what we want to do today. In times past, we we did a video on scruples versus doctrine, uh -huh. and and this would be a, a great. That's this is a great question to understand the application of which we, we yeah. can apply that absolutely. Um, and so this would fall under the category of a scruple. Okay. This will fall under that category. Um, and if you don't remember what the definition of a scruple is, uh, the definition of a scruple is a feeling of doubt or hesitation with regard to the morality or propriety of a certain course of action mm -hmm. of which one is going to take. And so really it's matters of opinion. Matters right? of opinion. Matters of yeah. opinion uh, and for one's own conscience, not something that's applying to everybody. Yeah. Um, and so when we deal with Halloween, right? It's important and any holiday, right? We have to keep in mind that more times than not, most people are not celebrating these holidays exactly. um, for the original purpose of which it was intended. That's where I thought you were going because that's exactly what I was thinking. It's like, so obviously this is one of those holidays that right. has a history of paganism, mm -hmm. even Catholicism right. and all these different things. And even in still in countries today, that it's still a big deal, like in Latin America and stuff. Right. Uh, but that's not how Americans see it. Americans typically, they think of the candy and the yes. costumes and the scary stuff and everything. Right. And so it's a different holiday. Yes, and, 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 and one thing that I really want to point out before we really get any further is when you talk about something being wrong or right, it's important that we be very careful there. Right? We use the word wrong, mm -hmm. but essentially it's sin, right? We're trying to say, is this a sin? Yes. And when we get to that point, okay, we have to pay very close attention before we just give a certain answer. Um a sin is what? A transgression yeah. against God's law, Missing right? the mark, that's right. Transgression against God's law. So how many sins does it take for you to lose your soul? <laughs> Only one unrepented of. Just one? Yeah. Just one is all so it takes. So that's important stuff. 
Right. So we can't be so easy to just jump out there and say, this is a sin. Wrong. Exactly. A sin. And that, that's exactly what Paul addresses. And we always go there when it comes to scruples is Romans 14. I mean, you just can't take Romans 14 out of the equation when it comes right. to matters of judgment. Because when you're talking about sin, that's, as you said, that's very important. But when you're talking about matters of judgment, well, then it's a little bit more difficult. And even Paul says in, in Romans 14, 5, one person esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convicted in his own mind. That's right. That's right. Amen. Couldn't, couldn't have been better put. Uh, Titus chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse number 5, to the pure, all things are pure. Amen. And, and so that's important. So uh, do children going to a trunk or tree at their local congregation, um, they're thinking about candy. They're having a <laughs> gathering. They're having a good time. They're not. Uh, they're dressing up. Of course, it's uh, it's the day and time which we live in, and they're just uh, are participating in something, and it's it's fun. It's it's pure. It's innocent. Yeah, and it, and if you don't want to participate in that day, if you see something wrong with it for some historical background, that's perfectly fine. Okay, uh, as well. It's just the fact that it's a matter of judgment. Well, and that's the other part to the answer. If you are dressing up and you are in your head saying, "Oh, I'm worshiping Satan, mm. and mm. Uh, I, I'm doing these things because of this reason," you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. That becomes a sin. <laughs> you're absolutely wrong yeah. if you decide to do that. So that's why we say that's a scruple because depending upon how you are viewing that and how you feel about it within your own conscious, then that tells you whether or not you are going to be wrong or right. So one can participate in it in it and be just perfectly fine. And then others might not be so fine. They could be very much so wrong in their participation of it. So is it wrong to participate in uh, Halloween activities? No, not in and of itself. No, not in and of itself. Amen. Thanks for that excellent answer. Well, we've talked about the gospel quite a bit in this episode. And if you hear something different from what you've been taught before, read your Bible. See if these things aren't indeed the case. We encourage you to always check all religious teaching against the Word of God. See if these things are so. And if you need to listen to our program again, check us up on the Scriptures, we would encourage you to do that. You can go to our website, to our apps, or to our podcast. From the apps and the website, you can get to the transcript of the program if you'd like to see that. Still have a question? Contact us. We'd love to hear from you. We might even answer your question on the program. We love you. We're praying for you. And we want you to make it to heaven. Always good news. Always good news. Good news. Good news. There is good news today. Good news. Good news. Always good news. Good news. Good news, there is good news today. All around the world, good news, good news, world. always good news. Good news, good news, there is good news today.